Welcome to the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from the Ground Up course. This course was created by a number of current and former Googlers, including Dustin Diaz, Greg Veen, Lindsay Simon, Ryan Carver, and myself, Sean McBride. We did this as user experience web developers, a role within Google's user experience group that's a hybrid between engineers and designers. We created the course because we wanted to teach Googlers about the basics and best practices of modern web development, and now we'd like to share it with all of you. So, why exactly are we here? Well, as you probably guessed from the title of the course, we're here to learn about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But what are we using these technologies for? Well, we're using them to build interfaces. We want to allow our users to interact with our web-based software. Nearly everything we build on the web is delivered to users as a combination of these three technologies. More broadly, you might refer to web pages, and you may have also heard the term client-side or browser code. A user interface can basically be broken down into three distinct pieces. First, there's the structure, which says what the different parts of the content are and how they're related. Then there's the presentation, which says how the content should be displayed and formatted visually. And finally, there's the behavior, or how the content reacts and changes based on user interaction. And if you haven't already guessed, these three components of the user interface map directly to the three technologies we're covering today. HTML defines the structure, CSS controls the presentation, and JavaScript creates the behavior. This is, as we say, the holy trinity of web development. Modern best practice says that each piece should be separated from the others and only used for its intended purpose. But it hasn't always been that way. Back towards the beginning of the web, most people were creating web pages with all three of these pieces jumbled together, as we see over there on the left. Inline styles and on-click attributes for JavaScript were abundant. This was a mess, there were all sorts of problems, and as a result, we were limited in what we could create. Then 2002 rolled around, and a couple things happened around that time. First, Wired Magazine launched a redesign based on cleanly separated HTML for content and CSS for presentation. Like Radiohead was to free music on the web, Wired acted as a pioneer to clean HTML and CSS. In addition, around that time, CSS Zen Garden was launched, demonstrating that a single HTML file could be styled in a million vastly different ways just by swapping out a single CSS style sheet and some images. Separation of content from presentation became a best practice. Then in 2005, or around then, the term Ajax was coined. While Ajax was really just another name for dynamic HTML, this also marked a turning point in how people thought about incorporating JavaScript into their pages. JavaScript libraries started popping up, which encouraged developers to treat JavaScript as a real programming language and separate their behavior from the rest of their page. And that's still pretty much where we're at, or at least where we're trying to be today. Not everybody follows these best practices, but we think there are tremendous benefits to doing so. First of all, this approach makes the web more accessible. Clean semantic HTML markup benefits users that consume the web through non-visual browsers, like screen readers. Writing good HTML even provides small usability enhancements for regular browsers, as we'll see later. Second, this approach makes the pieces of your interface more portable. When you cleanly separate structure from presentation, you can, say, drop in a new style sheet and immediately have a mobile version of your page. Separating and organizing CSS and JavaScript also means that we can reuse parts across multiple projects. Third, this approach makes your web pages easier to maintain. If you cleanly separate the different parts of your UI, a designer can make a change to CSS without affecting the content writer's HTML or the programmer's JavaScript code. And finally, this approach can help you to reduce latency. Separating CSS and JavaScript into separate files that are included in each page of your site and setting up the appropriate expires headers means that your visitors will download each of the files once and then use a cached copy on each subsequent page load. There's one additional benefit to this approach, and that's a term you may have heard called graceful degradation, or the positive version of the term, which is progressive enhancement. This is summed up rather well by a quote from the famous and dearly departed comedian Mitch Hedberg, who said, an escalator can never break, it can only become stairs. In the same way, if you've built your user interface on a foundation of clean semantic markup, then even if your visitors have JavaScript disabled or the CSS fails to load, they'll still be able to use your page successfully. Finally, before we get started, let's quickly take a look at an example user interface that we'll be using bits and pieces of in our examples and exercises throughout the course. If you've downloaded the zip file that goes along with the course, you can find this page under the demos directory. It's called demo.html. <clears throat> As you can see, we have a page with fancy navigation, with rollovers, 
we have a page uh, we have some boxes over here on the left with quick links that expand and contract we have a form a paragraph a table and all of this is built using the approach that we're going to talk about today so the cool thing is that we can look at the graceful degradation of this page for example if we disable JavaScript using our developer toolbar and then refresh we can see that the page is still usable. Everything works, we just, you know, these, uh, these boxes over here on the left are no longer interactive. And then if we go and we disable CSS, we can see that it's a bigger change, we don't have styles anymore, but because we wrote semantic well-formed markup, um, everything on the page is still understandable and styled by the browser's default style sheet. So it's all still usable. Alright, so here's the plan for this course. Right now, we're laying out the plan and what we're going to talk about. Next, we're going to dive into each of the technologies one by one. And for each one, we're going to talk about it first, and then we'll look at some examples and do some exercises that help to illustrate what we learned and give you a chance to try it out for yourself. All right, so let's get started.